Hello all. Welcome back to another interesting story under the Ajadi Kamrup Mahasa story series from ancient India by Mommy Show Mrs. Today let us meet an interesting uh, king from ancient India. But before I introduce you to that king, may I ask you one question? Can you give me a couple of names or at least one name of the big Hindu kingdom in India in 14th century? Yeah, I can understand. Most of you will immediately name either Maratha Empire, led by Shivaji Maharaj, or the Krishna Devaraya, I mean, uh, Devaraya Empire, which, which is in the Vijayanagara region. Or some people might even talk about Ahom dynasty, because they're the biggest dynasties, isn't it? But what if I ask you a question saying, have you heard about Gajapati kingdom or the Gajapati dynasty? Yes, my dear friends, we haven't heard much about Gajapati kings or their dynasty or their, uh, I mean, uh, achievements uh, in history. We would have heard maybe in passing when uh, when, uh, when we're talking about the uh, Vijayanagara Empire uh, about the wars which they waged with Gajapati kings, but they never, I mean, I never, especially personally, never read in detail about this uh, wonderful king called Kaprendra Deva from Gajapati dynasty. I mean, after uh, doing my research about this uh, person, I was honestly surprised as to why we haven't read so much about him. I mean, he is one person who is very closely associated himself with, to Hinduism and he wanted to unify the entire India under uh, one uh, Hindu umbrella. I mean, what's wrong in learning more about him? Come on, I'll, uh, before I uh, talk about who this Kaplendra Deva from Gajapati dynasty, what this Gajapati dynasty uh, is, uh, where are they from? I need to tell you a little bit. In 14th century, the current Odisha region is being ruled by Eastern Ganga dynasty. These kings are little different from the Western Gangas who are ruling Karnataka at that point of time. Okay, actually in 14th century, Eastern Ganga dynasty is on decline. Uh, the last king, known king of Eastern Ganga dynasty is uh, Banudeva and their emblems are being uh, shown here. Now, you might uh, ask me, you're going to talk about Kaprendra uh, Deva, but why are you talking about East, Eastern Ganga dynasty? How are Eastern Ganga dynasty and Gajapati dynasty linked? Yes, that is where I'm coming in to, uh, my dear friends. There are a lot of folk, uh, folk tales and a lot of uh, rumors about Kaprendra Deva, how he got uh, I mean, uh, crowned as the king of Gajapati dynasty. One such tale is that I mean, rather, let me tell you uh, the fact before that. Kaplendra Deva is not born into any royal uh, family. He's been adopted by the last king of Eastern Ganga dynasty. Point clear? Now, the thing is, how he got adopted by Banu Deva? That's the place where people have started spreading a lot of rumors. Um, some people said that um, this guy, Kaplendra Deva, is actually son of the army chief, one of the army chieftains of uh, Banu Deva's court. Some people say he is a Northman who came to Puri, Puri in search of food, and seeing his state, Banadeva, uh, the king Banadeva from Eastern Ganga dynasty had adopted him. Some people say that one known, I mean, well-known sage or hermit was visiting Puri, and he saw uh, this young boy Kaprina Deva resting under a tree on a hot sunny day, and they saw a serpent guarding his head, uh, protecting it from the sun's black rays. And the moment he saw uh, this uh, learned person saw this uh, uh, scene, he felt that this is the person who is going to rule this entire region, the Puri and associated area surrounding surrounding it. So he went and told King Banu Deva to adopt this person, whatever may be the folk, folk tale. We know for sure that he got, uh, Kaprendra Deva got uh, coronated as a ruler of Gajapati Kingdom in 1435. Now, you might ask me, how did we get this information? Yes, it is written in inscriptions which are found across various temples in Orissa, uh, even with, with the, which are still standing tall even today. So that is how we got this information. Now, you, you, you are able to see the smallest uh, area on the map, right? That is the original uh, Oriya kingdom uh, under, under Eastern Ganga region uh, rule at that point of time. But after Kaplendra Deva got coronated himself or announced himself as the king of Gajapati dynasty, 
then the gajapati kingdom that is the, the current this oriya kingdom has expanded its wings from uh, uh, throughout india it will not be i mean i'm not boasting if i tell you that gajapati kingdom uh, expanded all the way to ganges in bengal and all the way to the south of kaveri that is near trichy in the tamil nadu will you be believing it yes here are the maps here are the maps and the details about it see at that uh, point of time for, uh, during 14th century uh, sultanates were highly uh, power, uh, hungry for power and they wanted to expand their entire territory and get every, uh, all the uh, kingdoms under india into their control so we have delhi sultanate sultanate of bengal bahmani sultanate uh, janapur sultanate all of them trying to fight and take over the hindu kingdoms the biggest hindu kingdom at that point of time are the gajapati kings or vijayanagara empires and some from the mewar and malwa states apart from the rajputana states so from the such a small area in orissa gajapati i mean our kaplendra our main protagonist kaplendra deva had expanded his kingdom all the way from bengal till trichy you can see in fact he even went in occupied vijayanagara empire occupied the capital city of hampi as well so here are the timelines in which he has uh, taken up most of the hindu king, uh, kingdoms now you might be thinking that i am going to talk about one war after the other no my dear friends you are mistaken be i mean and uh, being a hindu king he the reason why he got so many hindu kingdoms again under his umbrella is that he wanted to give them a stable empire which can unitedly fight with the, uh, the influence of uh, sultanates which is very noble uh, thought indeed isn't it but i'm not going to talk about all the wars how uh, kapilendra deva had won all these wars because i mean the less uh, those wars have gone long dusted right what do what what benefits do we have if we have to read so much about the wars rather let us learn more from his life which which can be used even in today's modern world let us like take some life lessons from his life uh, kaplendra deva's life history come on let us move to the, uh, see other facets of kaplendra deva as i already told you kaplendra deva wanted to establish a hindu rule and how we got to know all this is through the inscriptions which we found in various temples the first temple which he constructed after getting coronated as a king is the kapileshwara temple in the current bhubaneswar area surprisingly this is a shiva temple and remember we are talking about 14th century where the war between shaivites and vishnuites is already in progress but this king though he, he worships the lord vishnu in the form of uh, puri jagannath swami he, he treated lord shiva also in the equal with the equal reverence and that's the reason why he had constructed a lot of shiva temples the first temple is kapileshwar temple right and there are inscriptions uh, all over the places in, in this temple and other temples which is constructed about how he is ruling his kingdom at that point of time in fact one of the inscriptions found there has given an order to all the subordinate kings about uh, their uh, obedience to hindu religion and they said if anybody acts against the hindu rules or regulations they will be banished from the kingdom and their area of control will be taken over by the uh, kapilendra deva himself so that shows how much he is strong but very particular about spreading the hinduism then comes the puri jagannath temple he himself uh, uh, says that he is a dasa of this puri jagannath swami and the, no then obviously he would definitely restore uh, puri jagannath temple right he is given huge sums of funds to uh, for uh, puri jagannath swami temple restoration and they beautified the temple they gave a lot of other <coughs> they he had constructed the tanks and everything in fact he had taken a title by name routre uh, which says that uh, routa here means in oriya means servant raya means lord so kapilendra deva uh, he has started calling himself as kapilendra deva routre which says he is the servant of uh, puri jagannath swami and ruling gajapati kingdom on his behalf and that is why he started the tradition of sweeping puri jagannath swami temple with broom isn't it a very humble gesture my dear friends in fact even today last year 
the uh, latest, I mean, the last king of Gajapati dynasty uh, has, uh, was seen sweeping the floors, <laughs> you know, before the other, uh, I was actually getting started. You can see him, isn't it? Some people say, no, 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 Kapila Deva is not the real ruler who has initiated this uh, tradition. It's some other ruler, whoever it is. But is the main declaration of this uh, founder of the Gaj Gajapati Empire, that is none other than Deva, that he, the entire Gajapati kings and queens or Dasas of Puri Jagannath Swami has set this um, uh, Gesha into motion. Whether it happened at this his time or at some other time is not our concern, right? We can still see the humbleness in the royal families. That is what I want to make a point here. Now, you might be asking, okay, he spread, I mean, he's constructed temples, he spread his uh, empire. What has he has done? What are the other facets of his uh, this personality? Yes, I'm coming to that point only, my dear friends. In fact, he's so fond of this Oriya language. He's made Oriya as the first official language of Purisa region. I mean, the entire Gajapati kingdom, in fact. And because there are certain inscriptions that we can find it even in, in Andhra Pradesh, the current Vijayawada, or Sri Rangapatnam, which has both Sanskrit Oriya inscriptions. So he's made Oriya as the official language that needs to be used on, on all the matters of the kingdom. He encouraged a lot of poets, a lot of authors, dancers, musicians. He encouraged all forms of art. And he is also a great Sanskrit scholar by himself. He's written a Sanskrit play as well. Everything fine, but but he forgot one thing, my dear friends. He's busy strategizing how to win in wars. He's expanding his territories. He's encouraging art and craft. I mean, art, dance, music, and all the fine arts. He's built a lot of temples for people to pray. People can pray only if their tummies are full. If they get four square meals a day, if they get proper job, which will give them the food, if their health is at uh, pink or pink of their uh, state. But when the uh, king is busy expanding his territories, what happens? He'll depend on local chieftains or local kings to take care of the region. And remember, his region has spread all the way from Bengal to Trichy down south, isn't it? The languages are different, the culture is different, food is different. Obviously, the people who are going from all the way from Katak to rule the Bengal area will not understand those things. The same thing happens in Tamil Nadu as well, isn't it? And he didn't give, and he started proclaiming that all the kings, all the, the local kings, also have to obey Puri Jagannath Swami, which is very good, in fact. No denial in that. But they are not able to understand the culture, they are not able to understand these things. So the failure, or Kapila, the, Kapila Deva's failure is that. His vision is good, his thoughts are good, but he had failed in spreading this philosophy till the last rung of his kingdom. So that's the reason that his kingdom is plagued with a lot of internal mutinies, scopes, revolts, everything. So towards end of, uh, I mean, around 1460s, he started recognizing this. And his mental health started getting affected because he was worried about the stability of the kingdom. He's expanded, created a huge Hindu empire, but its stability is at stake. And uh, his health has also started failing because he's continuously on the go, uh, waging one war after the other. So what happens? He's given the reins of his um, great empire to his first son, Purushottam Deva, and pa uh, passed away in 1467. So that's all, my dear friends, for today's story. But we do have valuable lessons that we need to take from Kapila Deva's life, which are applicable even till today. We all will start working, or some people, el elders who are watching this uh, video would have already started working, right? So the lesson here is, if you have to progress in your life or in your career, you need to keep your team happy, your surrounding people happy. Only if they are happy, you can grow up as a leader. Isn't it a very important lesson? Think about it. Let us meet with an, another interesting personality tomorrow. Till then, stay happy and stay safe. Bye-bye from Mishra Musings.